Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't you uh, turn with me in the Bible to, let's see where we're at, Luke chapter 22. Let me see what I entitled this. Failing forward for God's glory. Failing forward for God's glory. Father, I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you for this time, and I thank you for everyone that's hearing this, this word at the sound of my voice, Father, whether it's here in present or on that video, Lord, on YouTube, Lord. Father, I pray this morning you would touch the hearts of your people. And Father, I, would, I pray that you would encourage and you would build up, Lord, and you do what you have to do this morning, Father, Lord God, to cause us to keep going for Jesus, Lord, to, even if we fail, to fail forward, Lord God. And Father, we just thank you because it's all for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We've been talking, uh, I talked a couple of weeks ago on, on uh, Peter, God's man of power, and uh, yesterday and, and to even last night, uh, you know what I mean, all night I was just thinking about it and, and just getting different things from the Lord, and, and even this morning God was just showing me stuff about, because a lot, a lot of times I, I, you know what I mean, as a, as a Christian, I said Thursday night to, to, to serve the Lord, to work out your salvation means, you know what I mean, it, 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 I, I wish it was like always a happy occasion, but, it, but it's kind of like the way it is when you first get your job, and they, they call and say, hey, you, you've been hired, and you're like, oh, yes, thank you. I need a job, man. man. And you're so excited about your job. And I mean, you can't wait, man. You go get the khaki pants that they ask you for and the blue polo shirt or whatever it is. And you get your lanyard and your name there. It says, you know, your name and working at Walmart or whatever it is. And, you know, I mean, you're so excited about your job. You're there early. And, and, and I mean, for a while, it is just so awesome. Man. But after a while, you realize it's that four-letter word. Right. Work. Man. And you thought, man, you know, that's why I was laughing the other day. I said, these kids don't even know what's up. They, they, want, they, they, they want to grow up. Man. They're 11 and 12. I thought, I don't have to go to school. Yeah. Shoot, I'll go out there and I'll make my own, you know. <laughs> go ahead. Hurry before you, you know, you become an adult. Go, but now that you know it all, and go out there and get your own house and rent it and pay your own bills and your own phone. Right. And your own car and your own insurance on that car. And now that you know it all, go do it, you know. Right. And uh, how many know it's not like that? Right. Then you really become an adult and realize, well, what do we do now? Well, now you got to get a job and work. Right. And that four-letter word is something that, you know, I mean, sometimes work. And, you know, sometimes uh, most people, you know, I mean, I, I when I worked for the school district, it was, there, there was a, you know, I mean, it was a good thing. It was a fun time. There was some, some hard days. Right. You know, there was some hard seasons where you went, oh, I wish I didn't have this job. Right. You yeah. with me? Yeah. But but needless to say, when the check came in, it was really nice, right. yeah. you know, to have your job. And, and, and it was all worth it when you got paid. Yeah. Right. And, and the thing about serving the Lord is, you know what I mean? And I guess we, get, we do get paid in little ways, right. blessings and benefits and... Your kid being saved from being hit by that car, or, right. or, or, or you know what I mean? You could have, you know what I mean, been sick and God touched you and healed you, and you know what I mean? Stuff like that, you, you know, we fail to see as blessings from God, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but in life, you know what I mean? You, you, it's hard, man, serving the Lord, right. you know? Uh, uh, you know, because you got to keep going. Right. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's hard. That's right. But it's never in the good times that you grow. It's always in the hard. That's right. That's right. It's always in the hard. You know, I was talking about Thursday night about working out and stuff like that. And, and, and you know when you're working out, you're doing stuff your body's not used to. And the next day, you don't feel too good. Right. <laughs> you can't walk. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you with me? Yeah. And, and it hurts because you're using muscles you haven't used before, and it's yeah. not. But you've been living your life thus far, right. How, you know, feeling good. Right. But yeah. you went on a on a bike or on the treadmill, or you ran and you did something or lifted weights, and you're, you you thought you were good. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. You thought it was all good in the neighborhood until you started working out. Yeah. 
and you realize, man, them muscles that I used to do this on the remote are different than the ones that I'm trying to lift 250 pounds with. Wow, you know, I like, I like the muscles and the thumb better. <laughs> Because it doesn't hurt the next day. And you can flip channels all night long. Oh, come on now. And the next day you get up, it still works. Turn it back on and keep going. But you lift weights one time and you realize, or, or you know, you do your, I don't know, Pilates or Zumba or whatever it is you do, and you realize, where did those muscles come from? And I don't like the use of them after because it hurts. And any time you, you, you know, I mean, anything that's worth doing is, is going to cost you something. You with me? And you don't grow by sitting on a couch. You grow by going to that class, right? Or doing something like that or, or you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, in life serving the Lord, so, you know what I mean? You can come to church and you can read your Bible and have your little devotion and even pray. And, and, but the thing is, 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 is about working out is that if you do the same routine all the time, your body becomes used to that routine, and you could do it all day long. Right. You go to the Y, be on that treadmill, you know, all day long, right. and not even sore the next day because your body's become used to it. But switch the machine and get on the one that you have to, you know, you're stair stepping or or doing something like that, and it's a different muscle, it's a different region of your body, and right. and, and and it becomes sore again. Right. Are you with me? And it's switching up, and and you know what I mean. And you're like, your body don't know how to react. Right. Have you ever seen them, what, PX90 or whatever, one of those things? Right. Insanity workouts and yeah. stuff like that. The key to that is change, constantly changing. Right. You're never doing the same thing every day. You're always changing, doing something different. So your body doesn't, because your body has a tendency to get used to one thing. Yeah. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. And sometimes we do get used to coming to church and doing the same old, same one. Right. And, and, and because you're doing that and not mixing it up and doing other things, it, you know, it could become boring. Yeah. Right. Everybody's like, Man. no. <laughs> uh, and, and it's working that thing out, man, every day doing something different. You know what I mean? Hey, they're fasting. I heard that we're going to I'm going to try it. Try it. You with me? Yeah. Why? Because it's something you've never done before. Right. And boy, did it hurt. Yeah. Huh? Everybody that hasn't tried it would be like, I, could go, I go without eating all the time. <laughs> but set your mind to fast and watch and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. People be coming up to you with that big old large bird. Did you want some? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you with me? But, but, but in serving the Lord, you know, it, it is a trip. It's hard. Right. Especially even if you're working for the Lord. Right, you're going for God, you're doing these things, and it's easy to even do things and get distracted in the things you do. Yeah. That your relationship with God becomes cold. Right, and then you start being snapping at people and irritable and all this stuff. But, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the thing we don't understand is, see, because... And it's hard, it's hard for any of us to, for somebody to tell, hey, bro, you know, check your heart, man. Right, man. Check your heart because, you know, you're, you're getting kind of grumpy. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. You're getting kind of grouchy. You're kind of, you know, you know what I mean? You're, you're not acting the same. You right. smile. Yeah. You know, and, who are you there to tell me? You know what I mean? We, we have a tendency to do that. Right. You with me? Yeah. And, and, and because that's who you are. You with me? That's who we are. Our physical bodies and our, especially our minds. You with me? Yeah. Our bodies, you can make it come and sit here for an hour or two. Yes, you with me? Yeah. Your spirit, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you got saved and your spirit's right with God and everything, but it's your soul that you have a problem with. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yes, or for men, I said he motions. Because right. ladies, you know, this guy is man, emotional, man. <laughs> Why are you angry? That's an emotion. Right. Why are you grouchy? There's right. something wrong inside. That's an emotion. Yeah. Were you with me? Jesus. Amen. Why are you looking at me like that, honey? <laughs> That's an emotion. Why are you sad? What happened at work? Why are you like that? That's an emotion. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm just going to go sit out in the shed or sit there and watch TV. Because, you know, when you watch TV, it kind of just, you kind of like just zone out. Yeah. You just kind of like put it on pause or neutral and just sit there 
and just watch that TV and, and it's your mind ain't even, you're just laughing and thinking and you don't realize my spirit's in neutral and, 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 and any time our spirit's in neutral, the devil has access. Right. It's like the devil's playground right there. That's, right. That's why too much TV is a, not a good thing. Right. You with me? Amen. Amen. Amen or oh me. <laughs> you with me? But, but, you know, I mean, I want to talk today about, about uh, failing forward because the, 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 the thing about Christianity is the Bible even declares it. It says, seven times shall a righteous man fall, and seven times shall a righteous man get back up again. Amen. The fact is not that you're, uh, is it not, it's, it's not that you're not going to fall, it's that you have to get back up from that fall. Right. But, it, but we're talking about a righteous man. A righteous man, the only thing that makes you righteous is not coming to church, not wearing your tie or carrying a Bible. What makes you righteous is that you got saved and you accepted Christ in your heart. Amen. You with me? Because yeah. a monkey, you can train to come in here and put a tie on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A monkey, you can carry your Bible. There they come with their whoop, whoop. <laughs> with their Bible and they'll sit right there and they'll look at me and every once in a while I gotta throw them a banana and they'll sit still but you can train them to do that so what's the difference between them and us you with me what's the difference between a monkey and us or, or a dog you can teach to sit roll over I mean, you know that sometimes dogs are more obedient than human beings. Yeah. Talk and roll over. You roll over. Yeah. Roll, you know, and a dog just... Roll. <laughs> sit, boy. He just sits and he knows, you know what I mean? That's obedience, man. Right. You with me? Right. Yeah. But humans, you know, we always have why. What's, why, why do I need to sit down? Yeah. Well, you know, why are you telling me this? I don't have to do that. Because see, there's something behind this. If I sit, there's something you're going to do or say or drop paint on me or something. I know you're up to something. And you, you, you got this mindset. You with me? Yeah. That somebody's always out to get us. Somebody's always out to hurt us or harm us. And that's not the fact. The devil is a liar. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? You got to be careful. And guard, your, guard your mind, man. Because that devil will come with little dumb things that will just... And, and it's not, you know, I mean, it's like the Chinese torture treatment that was just a, a drop of water every few seconds on the forehead that would invent, I mean, I go ahead all day long. I don't care. That don't hurt. Ouch, that don't hurt. Mm -mm. Go ahead all day long. After a while, it does something to your mind, though. After a while, it'll drive you insane because that water just continues. And that's the way the devil is. He don't come and just, <laughs> he just sends that thought. He just sends that, that you with me? That little thing to continually, continually, see, I told you. And there it is again. And there it is again. And with every little thing, it's like, you know, I mean, until you really, really, I mean, I was thinking, man, us Christians, we're a trip. Thank God Jesus hasn't given up on us yet. You with me? Because, see, getting saved and coming to an altar and surrendering your life to God and all that, that's the easy part, man. Changing is the hard part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not talking about, well, I'm changed. I'm not the man I used to be. I don't drink, smoke, and do drugs, and all that stuff, and so I'm changed. And it's like, oh, no, you've just begun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He that began a good work in you, he's able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But he's going to complete it. Right. And it's going to, it's like a home. You don't complete it in one day, do you, Pastor Nate? Nope. Just say, I want a house. Amen. Let's go down there. We used to be Sutherlands, remember? Right. You go down there, and, you, and, and I don't know, Pastor Nate, you remember, you can go buy a plan. I, I don't know. I'm sure they still do that. Right. But you go down buy a whole kit, the plan, everything is there. Just take it home with you, and then one day you have your house. That's not true. Right. Because then comes the building. Then comes the work. Right. Then comes the laying the foundation, digging out the dirt, right. and the junk in your trunk. and. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. And calling in and having the finances and doing this. And, and if you've ever done anything like that, you know it don't happen overnight. Right. You with me? Especially if you're building it. Yes. If there's professionals coming in and building a home, they can have it done in how long, Pastor Nate? Uh, a big three-bedroom, you know, double-wide garage and, you know, the, the everything. Landscape, every, how long would that take? Three months with professionals working out every day? Well, 24 hours. But if you're doing just a regular work day, yeah, regular work day, probably about three months. With with a whole crew of men, and everybody knows exactly what they're doing because they've done it a million times. 
But when you got you by yourself and these plans and this wood and stuff, <laughs> there it is right there. And you know, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to start. And for you to begin to do that by yourself, you with me? Is 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 almost you know? It's 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 crazy. And how long would it take you to do that? I know men who have built their own house. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's taken them a long time to build it. Right. With certain help, they built it. Right. You with me? And you know it does not happen in a day. Mm -hmm. And what God's doing in you is not going to happen in a day, and it's not going to happen in a month. Right. It's not going to happen in one year. Right. You with me? Yeah. Anybody in this church that has been serving the Lord for any amount of time, 10 years, 20 years, you know, uh, if I was to ask you, are you done yet? No. You know, so I'm far from done. Right, man. You with me? Yeah. Because when you're done is when. Remember when I said when the guy looks in the in the in the in the gold or in the silver and he they turns the fire and the ugly impurities and the sin and the junk comes to the top, then they scrape it off. That's that's one of your great revivals and your great services that God done a mighty work in you. Right, you're not done yet. Right, fire turns it up again. He says, "There it comes, man. There it comes again and scrapes it again." And turns it up again. And this is a process over a long period of time to where eventually he turns it up and there's no more impurities and he can only see his reflection. And when that happens in your life is the day that God says, come home. Until then, you're a work in progress. Until then, you're under construction. I wanted to make some shirts like that, Pastor Nate. I wanted to make some, make some shirts in the back and have... All the construction stuff, a tape measure, a do not cross line, yeah. boards and, and hammers and things like that. And it's an under construction in the front, New Hope Ministries. Because he's still working on us. Yeah. Maybe under the bottom real small, he's still working on me. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Just to help remind you, hey, wait a minute, I ain't done yet. Right. You with me? Because sometimes we have a tendency to think, you know, we're done and... And, and when we're done, we're in a box, and we've ceased to strive. Yeah, we're done. You with me? God's taken us home, and there's just that flesh that you pampered so much. You with me? Yeah. And, and thought more of the outward than the inward, and the, and the outward's going to die. It's going to go to ash, right. to dust. You with me? Yeah. And uh, you know what I mean? But in this life, we're, we're always... We're always having struggles. He said, a righteous man will fall seven times, but seven times a righteous man will give up or will get up. And there's a difference in your life when you're falling, when you, when you fall. If I fell backwards uh, and, we're, we're, and we're really concerned about inches and, and, and uh, feet and yards, right. and we're supposed to be going forward, and I fall backwards, right. you with me? I've lost some yards. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? I've lost some feet. Yes. But if I fall, and I make my fall in such a way that I'm, I, I, you know what I mean, I, I, I got my, you know, at least some stuff together in my life to where I do fall, I fall forward, listen, I still gain ground. I'm still gaining ground. You with me? And the thing is, is you know what I mean, I talked to somebody the other day, and, and you know, they were just saying, you know, they're going through some things and stuff like that, and it's like, you know, welcome to the club. Yeah. Welcome to the club, man. You with me? And they, you know what I mean? And they, these people are doing good for God and, and everything. And it's just, you know, and sometimes, you know, you're going and this and that. And, man, it's exciting. You're looking for things to do for God. And then there's those idle times and those hard times and just those just regular days. Right. That you're like. I was telling, I don't know if it was Andrea or who. I just, I said, you know, after a while, you know, you come to the church and you can only study and pray for so long. Right. And then it's like, you hear crickets. <laughs> and even in that, you know, it could drive you nuts. Right. You with me? Because I'm, you know what I mean? I don't know if, uh, you know, when I was a kid, they, they said I was hyper, man. I think you would have considered me ADHD when I was a kid. Right. You with me? And as an adult, things don't change. You know what I mean? We're still active, still always doing something. Yeah. Right. And when you're standing still, it's like, I don't like this building. Right. Yeah. I, really, I really believe that's why God saved me, because he said, man, look at this, this guy, man, right here. Right. Since I was a kid, the teachers, the principals, others would say, this guy's a leader right here. Hmm? 
<laughs> me? I was leading to the wrong. But how many know I'm still a leader? Yes. You with me? These drug dealers out there slanging and making, you know what I mean, doing their books. They, got, they know how much drugs and money and stuff they got. You know what I mean? Just get them saved, get them in here, and we'll put them in the finance department and say, hey, take care of our money, man. Hmm? Right, man. Amen. They got gifts and they got stuff. They're just yes. using it in the wrong way. Right, you with me? Thank but I want to talk for a second. Peter, uh, I talked about him the other day, God's man uh, of, of power. But today I want to talk about falling forward for the glory of God. And uh, I want to show you in Luke 22 here about Peter. Because Peter always made mistakes. But he also walked on water. He also was one who said, and, you, and remember when I talked about him just the other day, it said that, that, that Peter was the one who said, upon this rock, because they asked him, who do men say that I am? He said, you're the Christ. Are you with me? You're the, you're the Son of God. And he said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven's revealed this to you. Right. And he said, and upon this rock, remember Peter was the rock. Right. You with me? Yeah. What's his name, the guy that's the Dwayne rock? Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson ain't got nothing on Peter. <laughs> Amen? The Rock, you know, Dwayne Johnson's like, shh, you know, he's nothing. Remember, God don't look on the outward appearance like uh, some people do. God looks on the heart. I wonder what Peter looked like for real, Pastor Day. If you compared him to Dwayne Johnson, you with me? He was probably not, I, I see he was, a, you know, not too tall. Probably had a nice little belly on him, big old beard, kind of a burly man. I see him hairy, and just kind of out there fishing, rugged, just out there. And you put him and Dwayne Johnson next to each other, and you know, yep, God looked at the heart. God seen what was in this man. And, and the Bible says this, it says, not many of you before you were saved were these wise, smart, intelligent people. You with me? Many of us come from lifestyle pretty jacked up. Yeah. We were the, not the, you know what I mean? You weren't getting the awards and all this stuff in school. You were out smoking in the, in the, in the back of the, the high school. Yeah. Not worried about getting yeah. gold cords and all this stuff, man. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And yet he saved you. Yeah. You with me? And he, you, he's using you to confound the wisdom of these people who are doctors and lawyers and, and, and judges and such. Right, you with me? That are looking and saying, you know, and you're ministering to them. Right. Pastor Ray was telling me a story about a man who, who's, I don't know if you ladies remember Juan Pais. He was the pastor of El Paso's uh, church there. And he was a tall, thin man and always preached on animals, mostly roosters and stuff. He would always preach, but he got saved from a life of heroin addiction and all this stuff. And they sent him to a psychologist or to the shrink. Right. You know what I mean? To where they lay you down and you're sitting down. Yeah, when I was in sixth grade, you know, this guy took my lunch and, and then I got up. I don't know why I stabbed him with the fork, you know, but and then I took his lunch. And, you know, I mean, you're doing all these dumb things, you know, and they're like, oh, tell me. How did that make you feel? And they're writing stuff down and stuff. So they send him to the street because they don't know what's what's up with them. You know, they're trying to fix him. You know what I mean? But but what happened was in this process, Pastor Juan got saved. Amen. He got saved and, and God delivered him from all these addictions and all this. But he was still going to this psych, psychiatrist. And so one day he's in there and, and he's always witnessing to this psychiatrist now. And so the psychiatrist is listening to him time after time, and finally he's like, hey Juan, can I ask you something? He says, yeah. He says, well, you know, he was having trouble with something and not feeling good about himself and going through some changes and this and that. And you got to know Pastor Juan, just tall, thin, old, big old mustache, funny, man. You know what I mean? And all, he talked with a heavy accent, man. And, and so he's, he's like, and the guy's like, hey, well, can you help me? And, yeah, man, and he starts telling him, he goes, wait, wait, wait. He goes, come on over here, see, you lay down on the couch. And, he, and he's sitting on the chair, and he says, tell me about it. And the man, the psychiatrist, is all laying down on the couch, and Pastor Juan, with no education, yeah. right. none, I mean, he's like Pastor Pablo from Albuquerque. And he has the psycho psychologist on the, on the bed laying down, counseling him. Go ahead, tell me, how does that make you feel? <laughs> 
I thought, my goodness, only God can do something like that. Only God can change people. You know what I mean? Peter probably looked like that. Peter was probably that kind of man. Not attractive at all. Probably stunk. He was a fisherman. Like I said, Harry just... I don't know who you compare him with, you know what I mean? But, but, but uh, you know, he was the one, Jesus said, hey, upon this rock... I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And it wasn't right after, long right after that to where Jesus is telling him, hey, by the way, you know, they're going to crucify me. And they're going to, they're going to, uh, uh, you know, take me before the Pharisees and Sanhedrin and they're going to, you know, do this and that. And, but on the third day I'm going to rise and Peter took him aside and rebuked him. So said, what's wrong with you, Jesus? Are we talking like that? And Jesus rebuked him back to get behind me, Satan. He just called him the rock. You with me? But all of a sudden now he's, he's calling him Satan. You with me? And he wasn't really physically the devil, but the, but the way he was behaving and the attitude that he had, he said, you, you savor not the things of God, but the things of men. Get behind me, Satan. You with me? And I was looking at that and I said, you know what? It was the attitude and it was what was coming out of his mouth. See, it's what comes out of you that defiles you, not what goes in. Well, I don't want all that stuff. And the, I just want the Brussels sprouts and all this stuff because I want to keep, you know, and do all this. See, but that's not what defiles you. That's not what messes you up. You with me? Adultery and all this stuff don't come from the eyes. It comes from the heart. You with me? I mean, if it was the eyes, you'd just be like, man, but hey, cut my eyes out, Lord. So I may not look upon another woman again. And guess what? Have you ever seen the movie Ray? Yeah. With, uh, what's his name, Ray Charles? Is that his name, Ray Charles? Yeah. The guy that was so bad on the keyboard and all that, Jamie Foxx played his thing. Did you see the movie? Yeah. He didn't need his eyes. Right. You with me? He'd be like, come here, come here, let me feel your hand. And he'd know from a feeling of a hand or a wrist, I want her. You with me? So the lust didn't come out the, the, of, of, the, of the eyes. You with me? Stealing. So how many used to steal? Well, don't raise your hand. But if they did, just kind of move your purse to the other side. You know? How many know in different countries, they'll cut your hand off for stealing? But if you cut their hands, both hands off, now you got no, just nubs, man. I mean, just walking around like that, and you, you, you see the purse, nobody's there, and you got yeah, money flowing out. How many think without hands, they can still get that money? Yeah. Even if they use their toes, their mouth, yeah. their stubs, yeah. you with me? Whatever it is, see, a thief is a thief in the heart, not in the hands. Yeah. So it ain't the outward things that, that defile you, it's what's on the inside of you. Amen. That's why God said, you know, you need, you need to be born again. Amen. You with me? Amen. And Peter was serving the Lord. Peter was coming to church. Peter was doing good. And all of a sudden, Peter was still in, the, in, in, in Jesus' face. Right. Saying things that were, were really not even spiritual, but, but fleshly. Because a lot of times we don't understand the spiritual things. And we try, you know, when we do come to church and we, we do get saved, we try and, you know, bring our past in here and try to, you know, use our old, filthy, dirty, selfish mind to judge stuff. And you can't do that. Because you're going to mess up every time. And every time, you know what I mean, the Lord will tell you, get behind me, Satan. For you savor us not the things of God, but the things of men. In other words, you're more concerned about the things of men than you are with the true knowledge of God. Right, and we don't, we don't want to be like that. Right. You with me? But Peter would always do dumb things like that. He seen Jesus transfigured on a mountain to where Jesus was literally in his glorified body. And Elijah and Moses are talking with Jesus. And Peter's like, wow, dude. And he's like, you know, he was like, Pastor Nate, you know what I mean? He's like, hey, let's build some shelters for him. Right. Let's build him a casita real quick so that they, they don't get rained on and all this stuff. I mean, why are you thinking of stuff like that? When Jesus is glorified and Moses and Elijah are right there, and you're thinking of fleshly, carnal things. Right. A house, right. a shelter, right. food, and the things of God are right before you. Right. You with me? 
And God himself was so heavy. You know what I mean? Peter's over here saying, Lord, it is good that we built these shelters. And God's like, shut up. <laughs> this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Shut your mouth and listen to him. Amen. Could you imagine that? Amen. All of a sudden, God had to just, because sometimes we won't listen to anybody else. God has to like you hear, shut up. <laughs> We'd probably say, oh, get behind me, Satan. I had an evil spirit tell me, shut up today, Pastor. And all the time it was the Lord yeah. telling you, hey, be quiet. All right. You with me? Yeah. Uh, 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 check out what's going on here, dude. You've been privileged to see the glory of God. You know what I mean? You're, you're looking around. You're thinking of things. What am I going to do after service? Let's see, I could make that. But then we need to get lettuce. And so, you know what I mean? And it's like the presence of God is here. That's why I tell you when we're worshiping God, you know what I mean? You're never going to see God with your eyes. You're only going to see him with your spirit. And if you're like this, looking around, you're seeing the kids, and they're, they're in their mom's purse, and you're looking around and watching stuff, you notice this, and uh, you know what I mean, and the carpet, and you're looking around, you know what I mean, and you're just, you're just like that. You listen, you're never going to grow in God. Right. It's not until you close your eyes and you get into the presence of God, you begin to see stuff you would have never seen with your eyes open before. As a matter of fact, you're going to see stuff with your eyes open you shouldn't be looking at. You shouldn't mean, no, well, I just, I'm sorry, but I noticed because you had your eyes open. You shouldn't have been noticing anything. You with me? Sometimes it's them very things that get us in more trouble than we need to be in because we, you know what I mean? It's like the presence of God is here. And we're like, I didn't see nothing. I didn't even feel nothing. Because you're not in the spirit. You're in the flesh. You with me? There's time. You know what I mean? My, my pastor's wife taught us that. You want to walk, worship God and you want to touch God, you got to, you got to just give it, give it to him, man. You just shut their minds and worship God with your heart. Yes, he said he seeks those that worship him in spirit and in truth. You with me? And there's more. You know what I mean? And all you got to do is look around and watch your pastors and you'll know what to do. You with me? Yeah. You say, oh, he's got his eyes, his hands lifted, his eyes closed, and he's crying out to God. Do you think I should do that? Right. I don't know. You with me? Yeah. We, we have a, that's why God brought you here as examples. Right. You with me? For examples from your pastors and leaders, and you got to do what we do. If you never do what we do, you're never going to become who we are. Right. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And we need, that's, you know what I mean? We need examples in our lives. Yes. Peter was... Was it was an example? He was a man, and I sometimes I feel like me and him would have hung out, man. Uh, yeah. I think we would have been right there because there's many times, you know, I, I felt I know, brother. You can ask Pastor Nate or those who've been around. God has used me in some powerful ways, yeah. and there's some times when I think, man, God, you're so. I am a friend of God, man. Jesus, come on, let's hold hands. I am a friend of man. We're tied like this. And other times I feel like God said, get behind me, seat. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were, you know, it's just been hard. Anybody been saying that? Yeah. It's been hard. It's just been going through some trials. It's just been going through this. And it's like, that's good, though. Right. See, hard is good. Yeah. Lifting weights is good. Being sore is good. Not understanding why why I'm sore there. <laughs> well, you've worked muscles. You haven't worked in a while. Right. Yeah, but there, there. Right. <laughs> huh? And, and you don't understand it. Right. You with me? But we, we, we want to sit down and reason this out with minds that have been torn, uh, jacked up for how many years? Yeah. Smoked out. Yeah. <laughs> And then you come to church, praise God, amen. Let me, let me just get, let me get a hold of this real quick. You call it the spirit. But that old mind's all jacked up. You got to be renewed. You got to be, you know what I mean, in the spirit. You got to let God do work in you. You got to have this word inside of you. You with me? And then you can start judging correctly. When you know and when your mind has been transformed, then you know what the will of God is. Until then, you're just guessing, thinking, you know, I'm right. Somebody said it the other day. I don't know who was sharing the scripture, but they, I think it was my wife was telling me, he said, every man's ways are right in his own eyes. But the Lord is the judge. The Lord is the one who says, 
<laughs> I know you think it's right, but it wasn't. Yeah. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything. I don't even believe in the Bible. Man wrote that. I, I don't even know if there is a God. And this and that. And it's like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but needless to say, come the day of judgment, whether you believe it or not, you're going to get judged. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yes. Well, I don't believe that. That's fine. I mean, you can believe what you want, but when it comes to that day and you're standing before God, you're going to be like, I should have listened to that guy. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. So no matter what it is, regardless if you believe it or don't understand it or, 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 or think otherwise, you know what I mean? God was going to show you one day, hey, they were right. Right. Oh, you know? Yeah. Peter fell a lot of times. Right. Peter, you know, and I want to use that as an example. Right. You with me? Because many times in your life, you with me? Yeah. You're going to fall. Right. right. But fall forward. Gain ground by your fall. You with me? When you get up, you're going to be ahead of the game, not behind the game. You with me? But let's look at this in verse number uh, 31 here. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Remember, he didn't call him Peter there. Remember, he said your name's going to be called Peter, Simon, right? But now he's calling him by his old carnal flesh name. Simon, Simon. Why he was calling him that? Because he was walking in the flesh. He said, Behold, Satan has desired to have you. And a, and a different translation, I think it was in the, in the, I was reading in the NIV, for those who have an NIV. Does it say sift you? Yes. Satan has desired to sift you, that, or, or he's desired to have you that he might sift you like wheat or as wheat. Amen? And I wanted to share with you real quick this, what sifting means. Because some of us don't understand what he's saying. Because whether you believe this or not, Satan desires to have you. He desires to sift you. And you're like, me? What did I do to him? You left him. It's kind of like one of those stalking exes. You with me? What would you call him? A, a, I don't know. Psycho. Psycho. One of those exes that is following you, look, and you're hearing stuff, they're sending notes, and you see them there, and they're following you, and say, you know what, uh, 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 no matter where you go, I'll be watching you. I'll never, if I can't have you, nobody can have you. That kind of ex. You with me? See, you were his before. And he wants you back. And he's going to try and kill you. Are you with me? So that God can't have you. Right. And Jesus said this, he said, Peter, or Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you. And this is what sift means, to cause to move. In other words, if you're standing here and I come and bump you, guess what? I'm going to move you. Right. You're going to move from the place you were just standing. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ. My yeah. And you thought you were good. Right. And you thought, man, it's, it can't get any better than this. See, I got saved, bro. I mean, Jesus is in my... Yeah. You're flat on your back. I'm talking about... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? The devil. The cause to move, to fall. He caused you to fall, to separate you. You with me? Yeah. He wants to separate you. There, there was nothing better than finding somebody else from a different gang all by themselves. Yeah. Because then you ain't so bad. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Or them finding you all by yourself. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. See, it's all good when you're with a crowd of people. But then when you're by yourself and there's a number of them, it's a different story. Yeah. You run faster than you've ran before. Yeah. And that's what the, the devil desires to do, separate you. Have you ever watched like a, the lions or, or some of those things on the, on the wildlife right. that wait and they'll wait for the, the, the animals, zebras or whatever to cross the river or alligators or whatever? You know what I mean? And they're looking for the little fat, weak one. Right. Huh? Yeah. The little one with the limp, gimp, <laughs> gimpy leg, and he's limping across, and they're waiting for him. They're saying, you know what, I want to wait. Everybody's in a hurry to get across, but that one right there is not even paying attention to where it's going. Right. Yeah. It's just... And they're, and they're, you're out there, and the herd's this way. And that's exactly what the devil wants to do. 
Right. He wants to he wants to get you so a sidetrack that you're not paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah. Right. And he wants to get you over here so he can attack you and sift you, separate you, yeah. to eat you up. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um to cause to stop or let me see. Oh, to cause to shipwreck. That's what that's what he wants to do. Amen. He wants to cause you to shipwreck. Yes. That's what he said. He said, Peter, he says, listen, Satan has asked for you, bro. Satan desires you. Right. He wants to cause you to fall. He wants to shipwreck you. He wants to separate you. Right. See, that's one of his greatest tactics is to say, you know what? You know, man, I just, I don't know. I'm just tired. I don't feel like going to church. Now, that wasn't the Holy Spirit. Right. Come on now. Yeah. That wasn't the Holy Spirit that just told you that. Right. If anything, the Holy Spirit says, hey, you need to go. Right. Yeah, but I'm tired. Yeah. I, I, I feel weak. You with me? Yeah. I feel like I need to rest. Jesus. And that's exactly where the devil wants you. Yeah. Right. You with me? Amen. He wants to separate you. You know what I mean? How many people do you know that have been to our church and they just... Not necessarily got and left our church, but just stop coming. Right. Just stop coming. Right. They're out there today talking about, you know, one guy was telling me, yeah, I got a new hope, right, Gerald? Remember at the mall? He was like, I got a new hope. And and uh, he was telling Gerald, and I was standing there, and it was one of the guy he knew. And, and he, Gerald's like, new hope? Because yeah, down there in 10th to try, that's my church. I looked at him and I'm like, I've never seen this dude in my life. And Gerald's like, dude, I go to New Hope. You don't go there. He's like, no, I'm there every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, I better go, bro. And he kind of walks up and I was standing there. And he goes, have you ever seen him? Never. But he goes to our church. So if you sit down and you feel like you sat on something, get up because it's him. Just be careful. <laughs> I guess he's in the spirit or something. <laughs> but he said, Satan has desired to, to have you that he might sift you like wheat. He says in verse 32, but I have prayed for you. Amen? Amen. He says that thy faith fail not. Faith. That your what? Faith. That your faith would not fail. Amen? And, and, and he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Amen. That word converted means this. It means to turn, oh, turn back to your faith. Return, uh, returned, done a 180. Right. You with me? Yeah. That means somehow you left your faith because of something that happened. Right. You with me? Yeah. He yeah. says, guess what? Satan's going Satan's gonna to jack with your life. Satan's going to mess. He's going to mess with you. He's going to try and get you off track. See, like when you say stuff like that, people they, either they won't believe it or they'll get a, they'll get afraid. Yeah. Yeah. And everything's the devil. All right. You with me? Yeah. No, not everything's the devil. When he hits you, you'll know it was him. Yeah. All right. You with me? Yeah. But Jesus says, "I'm praying for you." Amen. Yeah. Uh, there's a scripture. I won't turn to it, but in Hebrews chapter seven, verse twenty-five, it says that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for you. That's his job. That's what he's doing right now. He's interceding for us. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I know you don't understand that right now, but the next time you're going through a test, just thank God that He's praying for you. Amen. You with me? Because I know right now we're in church and everything seems good, and it's like, I have no worries at all. But you're going to leave in just a minute. Yeah. And you're going to go back to a family that's kind of messed up. Jesus. Yeah. You're going to go back to a city that's lost. You're going to go back to a, you know what I mean, a, a place where there's sin and drugs and all this different stuff. And, you know what I mean, and, and, and it might not be doing nothing to you right now. You know what I mean, you just say, you know, I, I don't drink or do drugs. I'm just kind of, they're my family, Pastor. you got to understand, I can't just. After a while, guess what? Either it's going to drive you nuts and you're going to go right back to it or you're going to backslide or something's going to happen. Yeah. Right. You with me? Yeah. Because that's the way the enemy works. Jesus. Just a little compromise. Right. You with me? Yeah. Well, I just hung out. I couldn't hang out with them. I had to make a choice and yeah. so do you. Yeah. If you believe it or don't believe it, that's up to you. But I had to make a choice. I cannot hang around these people. Yes. Right. 
I can't go around them when they're doing drugs and they're doing this and they're doing that. I can't do that. Man. You with me? Jesus. I can't because if I do, I'm going to fall. Right, right. And I knew it. Man. You with me? Man. If I stay here, I'm going to do drugs and drink. I got to get out of here. Right. You with me? Man. Man. And that, you know what I mean? Well, that's hard. That's cruel. Their family, this and that. And I would rather break away from my family and serve the Lord and be around family of God. They're going to help me, push me, they're going to, you know, uh, spur me on to greatness and to godliness yeah, and go to heaven. Yeah. Then think I'm right and hang around the people who need Jesus. Right. You with me? But, but are not ready to change. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? They're going to turn you. Right. They're going to turn you. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um... And he said unto him in verse 33, he said, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both to prison and to death. <laughs> and he said, I tell thee, Peter, he said, the cock shall crow or shall not uh, crow this day before, before uh, that thou shalt uh, thrice deny uh, that thou knowest me. Amen? Amen. He said, this day ain't going to end until the rooster crows three times and you're going to have, de or crows and you have denied me three times. Right. He said, I'm ready. Jesus. Do you know how many times I've heard that? Right. Do you know just not long ago, one of the young men that was coming to our church came in and he sat there, I'm ready, pastor. Call me, text me, I'm ready. I'm ready, Pastor, to, to go the distance, man. I want to win this city. I want to win the youth. I want to do anything I can to see this city and these kids saved and all this stuff. Do you know it wasn't a matter of a few days? Tommy, don't ever call this number again. Right. You with me? Man. Drinking, drugging, gone, just lost. Right. But just said, I'll go with you to prison. Right. Jesus, I'll die with you. Yeah. You know how many times I've heard that? Right, We're behind you, Pastor. Right. Where? <laughs> I can't see. So far behind, I lost vision, man. Right. You with me? Yeah. And see, the thing is, is I want to show you Peter's weakness. I want to show you this to, to, to help you understand, because it helps me understand who I am. Yeah. Because many of us have good intentions. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, no, Pastor, one of these days I'm going to do this. Yeah. One of these days I'm going to help. Right. One of these days, wait, wait till I get my settlement, and then I'm going to bless the church. Right. One person told me that for years, and brother, believe me, I've helped him pray for settlement and all this stuff, man. And man, I'm going to bless you. Watch and see. I am going to bless this church when I get my settlement, Pastor. I'm getting a good one. And brother, we prayed for years, and finally this guy got a settlement. And he came in, and he gave, he gave me the envelope with the settlement. And I thought, you know what I mean? And I looked at it, and I thought, well, it's not very thick. Maybe it's a check. I don't know what it was. I'm thinking it was a $20 bill. And I thought, man, what kind of settlement did he get? You with me? Because he was talking thousands. And I said, he could have done that on an average Sunday. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But it's like, you know, we have all these good intentions. We have, but when it comes down to the rubber meeting the road, we're like, yeah, but I couldn't help. I couldn't come because something came up. You with me? Yeah. And listen, you know what I mean? In, in this life, you know what I mean? In the serving Christ, it's like, you know, he said, if you want to find your life, you've you got to lose it. Right. If you want to lose your life, you know what I mean? He says, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll find it. You with me? And it's like, you know what? When we're serving the Lord, you got to understand, man, that this is, it's heavy duty. I mean, it costs you to come and lay down your life. God don't want a girlfriend, man. God don't want to just come and hook up and spend some time with you. Say, so, you know what, man? I just needed somebody to go to the movies with. Or, I was kind of lonely, so I thought I'd give you a call. Right, and then you never see him again, but some months later, there he is again. Yeah. Hey, gorgeous. Me? <laughs> I was just calling to see what's up. I'm back in town and thought I'd give yeah. you a call. Yeah. Right. Oh, 
Really? I was I'm learning to make take you to eat. Yes. Well, we know where this may lead. Yep. Right. Right. You with me? But still, we fall into the okie doke every time. You with me? And that's the kind of way sometimes we, we, we have a tendency to play with God. Right. Say, God, guess what? I'm going to church this Sunday. Aren't you glad I'm here? I mean, man. Right. Love you. Yeah. Watch at the altar. I'll tell you I love you. Yeah. Right. And then it's like months and months. And Jesus is like, you know, hey, you, you said that one Sunday. You, you love me. You're going to give me everything. You commit your whole life to me. Yes. You with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? And, and, and I, I want you to know you. Yeah. Yeah. God gives us people like this so we can understand ourselves. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Because some of us were like Peter. Yeah. I'm ready to die with you. I'm ready to go to prison. He said, dude, you're going to deny me three times. Don't you go to that church over there. You know what I mean? This and that. I don't go to church. <laughs> You with me? Aren't you over there with Pastor Vince Diaz? No. Uh-uh. You with me? I seen you at that men's breakfast. No, bro, that wasn't me. You with me? And we'd be denying God all the time because we look at Peter and we say, well, Peter denied Christ. Man, that dude, but you deny him every day. In different ways we act and different things we do, you know what I mean? And even in good intentions. Well, no, I want to do this. I'm going to help. I'm going to be a part. I'm going to do this. But you don't do it. And you just denied him. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to, I mean, we want to win the world. We want to, man, when Pastor goes on a mission, I'm going on that mission trip. Yep. Well, Pastor, you know, see what, what happened was, I, you know, I just don't have no money. I just, you with me? Yeah. And it's like, well, what can I say? You're going to go. You're going to do it. You with me? It's like, you know what? But, but, the, but the things that God puts in your heart, he puts them in there so you can continue, so you can complete what God gave you. See, Amen. Jesus completed. When he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. Amen. His work that he came to do, that four-letter word, Jesus finished the work. Amen. You with me? Amen. Peter just, what did Peter just tell him now? What did Peter just tell Jesus? I'll go to prison with you. I'll die for you. And of course you know, he denied him three times. Watch. Let me show you this real quick, though. Jump over to verse 50. And one of them, watch, it doesn't give a name. And one of them, he smote the servant of the high priest, and he cut off his right, he cut off his ear, or his right ear, it says. How many know who that was? Yeah, that was Peter. Peter was just talking about, let's win him for Jesus. And pretty soon Peter was on top, just sucking him in the face. And he took his knife out, cut his ear off. Hmm? Yeah. How many of you, I mean, as good as you want to serve the Lord and this and that, man, you deal with anger. Yeah. 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 Four ladies, all the men. I ain't angry, bro. What are you trying to say? Holmes? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Cutting people's ears off. You said you were going to serve the Lord and you were over there throwing her the finger. Come on now. Got to everybody, Chav, y'all. Go, come on, Pastor, not us. Let them words come out of your mouth that were just cussing and like you and. Mother blanker and all this stuff coming out and come on now, yeah, yeah. not you, right? Not not this church. He was doing that. Peter was doing that. He cut somebody. We were laughing the other day at the pastors' conference, or, or when we went to or the pastor race house. All the pastors were sitting there, and we were talking about one of the pastors. And he said, "Man, this time that they they wanted to make him because he got him. They got him in trouble for something dumb, something that was ridiculous." And, and he was made, this pastor like me, was made to go out into the city and pass out one million tracts by himself. Wow. Well, him and Juan Pais, remember the guy I told you about earlier, was counseling the other guy? They, went, they, they were made to go pass out a million tracts. 
Some of you have 25 and you'll take your whole week to get rid of those. A million, there were boxes, big boxes they're carrying with a million tracks uh, unfolded that they had to go pass out before they can go home to their cities. They, they couldn't go home. This pastor told them, you're not going home on the plane with your family until you pass these flowers out. They said, man, forget this. And one of the guys came and he said, hey, pastor said to give me your shoes, man. He had some bad old Stacy items on. And the guy, the horn, one of the homeboys brought him some big old skis, John, some Converse, nasty, ugly, old used ones. And this man's a small man, and they brought him some big old Converse and said, hey, pastor said, put those on, give me your Stacy's. Or, or, or the home director told me to come and get your shoes. And he says, well, I'll tell you what he thought. He said, I know you don't have nothing to do with this. He says, Mio, go tell him to come over here and get my shoes off my feet himself. And he came. And, and this pastor, I don't know where he got it from, but he caught a fork. And he pulled that fork out and he was running after this man trying to shake him. <laughs> I'm going to shake you, man. <laughs> And I know you would never do nothing like that. <laughs> Maybe not in deed, but in words you may. Right. Yeah, you with right. me? Right. Well, let me tell you what about them. And you've done the same thing. Right. It would have been easier if you stabbed them because yeah. they could have healed from that. Right. But the words, they'll never go away. Yeah, right. Right. You can never take words back. Right. That's what makes them so powerful. Right. You with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know, I mean, these kind of pastors give us some kind of hope. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I mean, I read stuff like this and I get encouraged thinking, gee, I'm not the only crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes me and God do have a talk and I'm like, dude, you done messed up. You chose the wrong man. God, I'm, I'm far from, I, I need help. Yeah. God, I mean, why in the world would you choose somebody like me? You know I'm broke. Right. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. You ever heard about being broke for Jesus and this and that? No, man. You just have you ever felt like you're broke and that not even God can fix you? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Not not you. Amen. But there's stuff wrong in your life and issues and things you deal with and see you know what I mean that you don't go around telling everybody else, but in your heart you're you're praying, is it God help me, Lord? Yeah. Yeah. God, there's some things, there's some, I don't understand me sometimes. Yes. See, some of you think it's just you. Right. You have no idea what pastors go through. Right. See, we're, we're the kind that will shake you. <laughs> Talk about, man, I'll tell that pastor thing. You may get shamed, bro. <laughs> I tell people, I said, man, these guys, these people don't know sometimes. I said, they don't want me to go east side, man. I'll take the whole church up. <laughs> now let's have an altar call. <laughs> you got that on YouTube. <laughs> They'll be like, Pastor, go psycho in Pueblo, Colorado. Kill the whole bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to go to that church. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Peter pulled his shank out. He cut an ear off. <laughs> Have you ever hurt somebody? Have you ever done something like that? It's a big man, the dude's ear's on the floor, and she's like, what you doing? <laughs> Sticks it back on him. <laughs> Dude's all, wow, that's crazy. He's nuts, man. Look at verse 54. Listen, look at, look at how. Remember it said he denied him. When Jesus was taken captive in the garden, the people, the, the, uh, every disciple ran. But watch what it says in verse 54. It says, then they took him, or they, then they... Then took they him, and they led him, and they brought him unto the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you blew it, made mistakes, and you just jacked? I'm not talking about y'all. 
as a sinner, you, I'm talking about as a Christian. Yeah. And you, 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 you come to church, but still in your heart, you're far off. Right. You're kind of a far off. And, and look what it says. Uh, it says, and when they had, and when they have kindled a fire in the, in the midst of the hall, it says, and we're set down together. Peter sat down among them. He was warming himself with the fire of the, of the enemy, basically. Right. He was sitting down with a bunch of heathen, ungodly, un, uh, you know, people who didn't have nothing to do with God. And he's sitting there and he's warming himself there as if he was one of them. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That blows my mind. But sometimes it seems like we find ourselves there. Yeah. Right. In a place that you, sh you know you should not be warming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you know God's watching. Watch, watch what this says. Look, in verse 56, he says, But a certain maid, he said, Behold, beheld him as he sat by the fire and, and earnestly looked upon him and said, That this man was also with him. Verse 57 is the first denial. And, the, and, the, and he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Verse 30, uh, 58 is the second one. And after a little while, another saw him and said, uh, He says, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Verse 59, third one comes. He says, And about that. The span of one hour after another, or after, he said, another com, uh, confi confidently uh, affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter, verse 60, said, Man, I know him not, or I, I know him not, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, when he yet spake, the cock crowed. And watch verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Amen? Amen. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord, uh, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me uh, thrice. And Peter went, went out, and he wept, wept bitterly. Could you imagine that? After all the things God has done for you, and after all the, 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 the statements that you've made, I'm going to serve Him. Do you know how many just men alone? Mighty men of God. Young men that have been gangsters, that have been, there, that have been through our ministry, that have sat here with us. And I got pictures of our men's retreats where we're all deep of men, man, just all vatos, man, all saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, standing there around their pastor. You with me? And yet, you know what I mean? How many of them are gone today? Yeah. They're out there in the world and, you know, doing their thing. They don't go to another church. If they, they, they say anything, they say, this is our church. If we ever go to church, it'll be here. So that means they're out there doing their own thing. You with me? But have sat here, Pastor Nate will testify and will say, Pastor... God has shown I'm telling you, God has saved them in a mighty way. Man. They should have been dead. Prison, all this different stuff. But but yet all this stuff, and, and yet, you know what I mean? It's like they walked away from God. Right. One man I talked to right here, right here in the front row. He said, I'm going, Pastor, I can't do this. I need women. And believe me, he loved the women. And I said, Brother, you're going to backslide and go serve the devil just because of a woman? Because of a your needs, yeah, and you're still out there. Right. You with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? He, he, he did, when doing that, he denies Christ. Right. What if he dies in that state right there? Jesus. Somebody from our church would say, yeah, I've seen this guy, and I would tell him, you know what, God loves you. It's fine, this and that, just goodness. Don't tell him that. You're telling him in this state and everything like that, that you know what I mean, if, if he dies, he's fine and he's going to go to heaven. No, it's not. I, tell my, I asked my pastor the other day. I asked him about somebody who had died in sin like that. And I said, Pastor Ray, do you think he went to heaven? And Pastor Ray said, do you? 
How could he, brother? After all these things he did and this and that, how, how, how could he went to heaven? And I thought, he's right. How could we think that we can do all that stuff and still in that state because one day we came up here and said some kind of haphazard prayer? Really didn't mean it. That we're going to go to heaven just because we repeated a, a pastor's words? Right. You with me? Yeah. Peter, why do you think he wept bitterly? What do you think he would have thought? What, what would have went through his heart when he said, I, man, I'm not even with him? And he heard, Arr! and he turns like that, and Jesus and him lock eyes. And he looks, and he's like, dude, and Jesus is like, I can't believe you did that. I wonder, and he said he ran out of there and wept bitterly in his heart. You with me? Yeah. Peter had some issues, man. He had some stuff, but you know what? Thank God he don't give up on us. Amen. Jesus said this, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said this, he said, Satan has desired to sift you, Peter, but I'm praying for you. Amen. I thank God it doesn't depend on our, our holiness and our ability and, and, and us just doing everything perfect. It does, you know what I mean? That when Jesus in Hebrews 7 25, he's ever lived to make intercession. He's up there, man, before the fathers. He's like, God, they're with me. God, everything I've done and everything I took on that cross, I paid for their penalties, Lord. God, don't hold that sin against them. He said, if you confess your sins, he said, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what Jesus did for us on that cross. And Jesus wasn't done with Peter. Let me, let me finish with this in John chapter 22. Turn there. John chapter 22 verse 15. Jesus had just shown up on the shore after his resurrection. These guys, after all that had happened, they knew Jesus was raised from the dead. Peter says, hey, bro, I'm tired of waiting. I don't want to go to church. John, is it 21? She's like, we don't have a 22. <laughs> I'm sorry. After everything Peter had been through, bro, it's time for church. And he says, I'm not going to church. I'm going fishing. <coughs> huh? And you know what all the other people said? See, you got to be careful because you can be a leader in the wrong direction. Yeah. They said, you know what? I'm going to do this. And they said, hey. he goes, I go fishing. And they say, we are coming too. Uh -huh. yep. And they all found themselves in a boat fishing when they bit it where they should have been waiting on the Lord. Right. And yet God, you know what I mean, somehow in his mercy he oversees that. Right. And, 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 and after they jump in, he feeds them and all this good stuff. And I put on, I put on as a title of, of, from verse 15 on, an awkward dinner, to say the least. Right. How do you eat? How do you go? How do you feel when you're at, when you're at odds with individuals? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's never, never a comfortable situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he, would, he had made them dinner. He made them fish and bread and, and all this stuff. And they're sitting there and, and Peter's looking at I mean, he, I wouldn't want to look at Jesus. Yeah. He, they said he, got, he was in the boat when he seen Jesus. He was fishing naked. <laughs> Read your Bibles. Right. It says, well, what kind of men are in the boat fishing naked together? I don't want to be in that kind of fishing trip or men's ministry. But he jumps in the boat, out of the boat, completely naked, and starts swimming. And I thought he was swimming to the Lord. And I come to find out he was just kind of swimming away from the boat because he wanted to get away, as far away from Jesus as he could because it was an awkward situation. You with me? How do you go around somebody you just deny? You with me? And he says here in verse 15, Jesus... Jesus, uh, uh, so, when, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, he said, lovest thou me uh, more than these? Amen. Remember, he told you, I love him more than these guys, right? Yeah. Jesus is using his own words against him and said, do you still love me more than all these guys? And he said unto him, he said, yes, Lord. He says, thou knowest that, that I love you. Then he said unto him, feed my, feed my lambs. Amen. And he said unto him again the second time, 
Simon, son of Jonas, he said, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, he says, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verse 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, he said, Lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved. Now this was Peter's downfall. Because every time somebody would challenge him a little bit, he'd start getting angry. Yeah. Anybody here deal with anger? Yeah. I mean, when things don't go your way, you yeah. start flipping yeah. out. Yeah. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, He said, Lord, thou knowest that all things, he said, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. He was concerned. Remember, he said, when thou art converted, strengthen the brothers. Yeah. You know why God wants you strong? So that you'll be a strength to the people of yeah. God. Yeah. So that you'll feed the flock of God. Yeah. You with me? And Peter, verse 19, then spake he, uh, sick, this spake he signifying by what death that he should glorify God. Remember I told you? When you're, old, when you're young, you did everything you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? You acted the way you want. You went to where you want. You did what you wanted, Peter. But when you're old, somebody's going to dress you. Somebody's going to take you by hand, bound to a place you don't want to go. He was signifying the cross and his death on, on a cross upside down. You with me? Because I want you to know, and this is hard to swallow for any of us, but no, even in our mistakes and even in our failures, there's always a consequence for it. Even in New Mexico, they'll tell you truth and consequence. Right? Amen? No matter what we do, God always loves us and He'll always restore us and He'll always bring us back, but there's always a consequence. And Peter had to face this consequence, and Jesus told him, because of the things you went through, you're going to die the same death I died. Right. You with me? Yeah. So it's not just like, oh well, praise God. Yeah. It's under the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Right. No, there's some consequences. Yeah. Right. There's always, the, remember, the judgment's coming. Yeah. And there's going to be some things that me and you forgot about. Yeah. That God's going to be like, oh yeah, do you remember? Yeah. Oh man, God. Yeah. He's like, no, no, you're not going to hell or nothing, but there's going to be some consequences for that. Right. So you're going to have to go clean Pastor Vince's pool. Every day for the rest of your eternity. <laughs> That's pretty good. Huh? Hey, look, look what he says. He told him that but to signify the death that he was going to do. He said, and when he had spoken this, he, he saith unto him, follow me. Amen. Amen. Then Peter turning about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved, which was John, right? Following. He said, which also leaned on him, on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, he says, what is, what is he, uh, oh, which is he that betrayeth him? He said, uh, Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what, what, shall, uh, what shall this man do? And Jesus said unto him, he said, if I will that he tarry till I come, he said, then, then uh, what is this to thee? You follow me. See, even in this, even in his restoration, yeah. even in getting his life right and restored with God, he's like, you're going to go through some trials and you're going to be crucified. You're going to suffer a death. And he's like, what about now? <laughs> what is he, what is he going to do to her? Why are we like that? Why are we like that? Why can't we just say, you know what, hey, listen, this is going to be, a, you're going to face some discipline. Yeah. Well, what about Anthony? How come he don't? He was there. Why are we worried about other people? Even in his, even in his rest, restoration, he's looking like, well, what about her? And Jesus said, hey, listen, what if I want her to live till I come back again? He says, you serve me. Yeah. You serve me. You don't worry about her. You don't worry about him. You don't worry about her. You worry about you. Yeah. And you serve me with all your heart. Yeah. You with me? Even though he fell, he fell forward. Seven times shall a righteous man fall. He fell forward. Seven times he got up. He's restored. And even in his restoration, I think Jesus is like, hey, this guy, 
things, man. Yeah. What does it matter if he lives till I come? You serve me. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I was looking at this and I said, man, God, you're so good. Yeah. Even in our craziness, even in our, yeah. you know, our attitude and our, and our all this stuff, God don't give up on us. Yeah. He don't give up on us. He continues to love you. He's making intercession for you right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but remember, he said when you are converted, remember, when, when we make mistakes, we have to turn back to God. Yeah. You cannot continue in your sin. You cannot continue in wrong and think, well, God knows my heart. The devil is a liar. And I think he's made that slogan. Yeah. I really do. I think he put that in himself. I mean, write down, God knows my heart. And give it to the church. And the thing is, I say, yeah, he does know it. And he knows that it's wicked and above, even more evil than any other thing. Right. You with me? Yeah. He said, when, you, when you've gone through hell enough to turn you back to me, he said, then strengthen the church. Yeah. You with me? His whole thing in your life, his whole purpose is so that you can grow and mature, become the man of God or woman of God that he has you to be. Why? So you can strengthen the yes. church. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Stand with me this morning. Ain't that something? Yes. Upon this rock I will build my church. Yes. When you're converted, strengthen my church. Yes. Do you love me, Peter? If you love me, go feed my lambs. Who's his lambs? We are. Yes. The church of God. You're his lambs. You're his people. First time he asked him, do you love me? You know what the word was? It was phileo. It was a brotherly love. In other words, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's not the kingdom of heaven. He said, you know I love you. You know I phileo you, Lord. You know we're homies. We're tight. You know how long that lasts. That's why this cannot be a homie relationship. Come on now. You can't have a homeboy relationship with your pastor. You can't be homegirls with your pastora. Yeah. There's got to be such a deep love and a deep respect in there. You honor them as if you honored God. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? He said, I don't want none of this homeboy relationship. Do you love me? Yeah. Do you phileo me? He goes, you know I phileo you, Lord. You know I love you. You know I got your back. He said, that's what you said last time. Third time, do you love me? The word was agape. Do you love me more than anything? No matter what happens in your life. And he said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, you know I agape you. And he said, feed my church. You with me? You got to understand God loves his church so much. I'm not talking about just our church, the body of Christ. Not every church is God's church. You with me? Yeah. Oh, that all the churches are good. All of them are Now the devil is a liar. Yeah. Not all of them are good. No. Right. Those who love God with all their hearts, those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord, those who live according to the word of God and fear God and honor him in their life, them are the churches that are the church of God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever say that out of your mouth again. No, all the churches are good. Don't ever say that because it's not true. You with me? There's only one church. There's not a thousand churches. And that's the, the, the you, you with me? That's the universal church of God. You with me? And we've got to understand that if God is so concerned about his church right now. You with me? The body of Christ. There is so much division. There's so much fighting and backbiting and all this stuff. And, you, you, and we pray, Jesus, come quickly. Would you want him to come for a church in the condition that it is? You with me? I mean, I, we could probably say right now of ourselves, God, don't come yet. Right. Don't come yet. We're not ready, God. You with me? But me and you have to try and get ready. Because it's more than just us. There's people in our city who are not saved yet who need Jesus in their hearts. And unless me and you get it together, they'll never get saved. Because all we're doing is thinking about ourselves and our problems and our issues. And we're not thinking, gee, I need to get ready. You with me? Don't be like that person that's, you're there, man, waiting 5, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you're outside, and it's hot, and you're honking, and they're so inconsiderate that they just keep you waiting, wasting your gas and all this stuff. And, they're, you know, they, they can care less. I'm not done yet. 
There is a time when he's coming that whether you're ready or not, remember that when you're a kid? Ready or not, here I come. And when he's gone, he's coming at a time when you're you least expect it. We've got to get ready, we've got to stay ready. And along the way, we're like, hey, are you ready? Hey, are you serving God? Hey, have you asked Jesus in your head? Are you, could you, are you plugged into a church? You need to get involved. You can't be out there alone. Don't you know what happens to those who are out there alone? The devil can tear you up. You need to get in there in the church. That's, are you with me? Amen. Amen. He loves his church. And his church is more than us. You with me? His church is more than us. Sometimes we think, I am the church. You with me? Ain't that a selfish remark? Uh, the, the sad thing about the church is that you got to learn to get along with each other. You with me? And we, we tell the children's church in there, don't fight, be nice and all this stuff, but us, we can't do it. How many know, if, unless we do that, they're never going to get saved. And if they don't get saved and Jesus comes back, guess who's going to be held responsible? We are. And he's going to say, you couldn't get it together long enough? He says, them people went to hell for eternity because you couldn't get it together. Right now. How many know it's time to get it together? Amen. It's time for us to come to that place where there's a weeping and there's a bitterness in our soul. Say, God, I want more than anything to be yes. right with you. Amen. I'm tired of thinking about me and how I feel. Amen. i got to think about you, Lord, yes. and about how they feel. Amen. You with me? Right. Amen. Amen. Remember how hopeless you used to feel at one time? Yes. Not even the drugs and booze can... can make you feel happy yeah, no more. Yeah. They feel like that still. You with me? And we, you know what I mean? We've got to get to the place in our personal lives where he says, hey, don't worry about them or don't worry about it. You serve the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, ain't that something? What about him, Lord? Yeah. We always want to point the fingers. And Jesus is like, you do serve God. Woman, you serve the Lord and stop worrying about everybody else's. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to save the whole world. Can you save yourself? Yeah. Right. That's right. You with me? That's it's right. time that we turn back to God. Yes. Yeah. Fall forward for His glory. Because yeah. yeah. one day you're going to bring Him glory right. or shame. Yes. And I want to bring Him glory someday. Yeah. Yeah. I want God to... yeah. Isn't that your desire and your prayer? That no matter, because see, we're all, we're, we're just human, we're clay, we're, 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 we're not Jesus. Right. We're, we're striving to be like yes. him. Yeah. You with me? But we all fall, and we all fall short of the glory of God. Right. You with me? Yeah. Don't live your life there watching everybody else. Remember, where's their mirrors? Yeah. Look in that mirror. Yeah. Try and control that individual. Right, man. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and let God do the rest. Yes, yes. Pray, God, pray for me. Yeah. I ask him sometimes, the Lord, just pray for me. Yeah. Intercede for me, yes. Jesus. Amen. We don't ask saints like the, you know, the church, do they ask saints to pray for them? Or, we don't do that, but Jesus is our intercessor. Yeah. Yeah. And I ask him, Jesus, yeah. intercede for me today. I need some prayer, God. Yeah. I, need, I need you to touch up the stone for me. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 when I read that, I was encouraged. And I thought, man, I ain't the only crazy one out there, Lord. Huh? I ain't the only whack job out there. You with me? The apostles were men just like us. We'll learn about that tonight. I'm going to teach you something out of James chapter 5 on the guidelines of prayer. We're going to learn about that. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the, the word of God. Lord, I, I really do. I really thank you for Peter. Because Peter, once got the Holy Ghost, Lord, he was a totally different man. God, he was a man of God, a man of God's power. And that's the way I want to be, Lord. Father, we don't want to leave. We don't want to live this kind of fleshly, carnal uh, uh, lives, Lord God, that are that are just concerned about the things of our flesh. Father, we want to cross over into the spirit realm, Lord. We want to be world shakers and history makers. 
Father, we don't want to stay back in the flesh doing things just to gratify our own personal needs. We want to change lives, Lord. We want to shake a city, Father, Lord God, that I believe you want to shake here, Lord. God, help us this morning. Help us come to a place, Lord, where we understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, we want to be like you. We want to be like you, Lord. We want to be like you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we need you. Come on, help me pray this morning. I'm just going to ask you to pray right there at your, at your seat. Because I want you to make it real with God. I want it to be something you do and not something I cause you to do. If the Lord has touched your heart right there where you're at, then pray to Him right now. If He's convicted you in areas, then repent of those things. If He's inspired you in areas, then go for it. Do it. But don't leave this place the same way you came in. In every situation, in every aspect of our lives. Come on, ask Him, even in my business, even in my job. The way we treat our spouses, the way we love our children, God. The way we love our church family, God. There should not be any greater love that we have than for that of our church family, Lord. None, not even our own, our own immediate families, God. You said love the body, you love the church deeply, God. With a love that is not superficial. With a love that is not a phileo love, Lord God. But we'll scratch your back, you scratch ours, and then when we disagree, run. But with a love, Father Lord God, that is grounded and rooted, and, and, and Father Lord God, deep, deep, Lord God. Ask God to help you change so that you can bless the church. Ask him to give you a great love for that brother, that sister, that individual. A love that's not superficial, a love that's not a quick pat on the back hug. But when they hurt, you hurt. When they weep, you weep. When they laugh, you laugh. When they're in trouble, you're the one running in, not running out. God, give us a love like that. I want to love like that, Father, the song says. Holy Spirit, teach us. Teach us to get out of this superficial love. Give us such a deep love that we're willing to lay our own lives down for the church, God. Come on, ask Him today, Dominic. I don't want to be a soul brother. I don't want to be a soul sister.